What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a fresh demo actually for a game that just hit Kickstarter. Normally, I don't cover Kickstarter games. I know I say that at the beginning of every video, covering a Kickstarter game. I promise you it's selection bias. I turned down probably 99% of Kickstarter games just because I've been burned too many times. And, and I feel like it's the bro code move to do to not pass that burning on to you. I'm also aware of a lot of industry practices like publishers using Kickstarter as a promo tool when they don't even need the money. Like they will take people's money just to gauge like public interest as to whether or not they actually want to fully fund, you know, a game that they've already signed or anything else. Like there's a lot of people using it for ways it's not supposed to be used. Nonetheless, I, I feel like every time I cover a Kickstarter game, I end up feeling like an idiot six months later. But today we're going to be taking a look at Trash Goblin. I did a little research about this game and its developers, and it seems like they are a very small team that actually needs the money. They don't have a publisher. They're actually doing all of this out of their own area. So uh, this is a game that is actually really intriguing to me. This is a game about a goblin that runs a pawn shop, basically. Not like a pawn shop. Like, almost like a, a restoration shop, so adventurers bring you weird relics and things that are encrusted with, like, dirt and rust, and you've got to use, like, oil and, and, like, little pins and things like that to, like, scrape them off and clean them. I have a, I have a minor in paleontology, so, like, I've done this stuff in real life, and so it, it intrigues me. So let's go ahead and get started. If after watching this you wanted to check the game out for yourself, there is a link to the Kickstarter, but I highly recommend you look into the developer, you look into the publisher, you make sure they're not doing any of those publishing shenanigans that I just brought up a minute ago, because that's not a consumer's problem. Consumers shouldn't have to deal with that. Uh, but I will put a link down there. Hopefully this demo, tur demo turns out to be rad. It seems like it's got a cool premise. You'll also find a link down there to my Discord and my Twitch stream where you can find me every day of the week. I haven't been streaming the last two weeks or so because Thanksgiving, in and out of town, lots of people flying in, needing to be picked up, stuff like that, constantly busy. And then I got the flu right after everybody got here. So it's been like a weird couple weeks of non-productivity. But I'm back now. My voice is recovering. I'm no longer, uh, you know, laying in bed all day with like a comically large ice bag on my head and a thermometer in my mouth. In this cozy shopkeeping game, you are a little goblin with big dreams. In the employ of Eamon, the kindly antique dealer who works upstairs, your goal is to sell trinkets and save up enough money to start your own archaeology business. Sacks of goblin knows what are delivered to your shop every single day. Chip the dirt off to find whatever is hiding underneath. Sell them as is or spend some time cleaning them to hawk for a higher price once you've bought a sponge. Of course. Manage your time and make the most of every day, or just enjoy pottering in your cozy little space. It's up to you. Yeah, so one of the big taglines on the promo that they gave for this game was just that there's, like, there's no time limits. You can do whatever you want whenever you want. So this game is totally meant to be, like, a zen experience where the sound of the chisel and you kind of, like, spraying dirt off of objects, you're just supposed to kind of sink into it. I thought that was a really unique idea that I hadn't really seen in a game before. So drag the sack onto the mat uh, with your left click, get ready for work, equip your chisel, and then use it on the sack. All right, so there's our sack. Put it right there, playing with my sack live. You got to take the low-hanging fruit, chat. All right, you knew that joke was coming. As a YouTuber, you don't understand. You talk for a living for the last decade. You run out of stuff to talk about, so you got to take the easy wins, things like jiggling my sack on screen, you know, like, you got to take the low-hanging fruit, otherwise you, you just run out at a certain point. All right, so what are we doing here? Okay. So chip away cruft. Oh, it's called cruft to reveal the trinket. Chipping away will gradually reveal the trinket that's hiding underneath. If you chip any parts containing the trinket, they're marked automatically. Rotate the whole lump by dragging with right click. Okay, so we can kind of, like, click that right there. Ooh. Okay. Nice, satisfying little noises right there. There it is. Uh, it looks like we found ourselves just an old, just an old trash bottle. Just you know, Grandpa's old bottle of wild turkey. All right. Uh, when you so little things with the demo right there, just a little observation. The pick should come off your hand when you finish the object and go back onto the workbench. It wouldn't. Let me, it wouldn't, it left my cursor the little chipper. 
until it actually moused over like a context box. You're going to want to clean that up by removing the tool entirely and reverting the player's cursor back to a cursor. Uh, it just feels janky the way that you've got it right now. Congratulations, you got your first trinket. You can store it in a stash by dragging it over and dropping it in. You can left-click on the stash to open it to check out your hoard and drag stuff back out. Can I take this, like, off my hand? Like, how do I drop this? Apparently, I right-click over on the other side of the desk. So we can take this bottle... And we just put it inside the stash. Oh, I like the little stash, how it's actually like a little illustrated book. That's kind of cool. All right. Uh, so put the sack in the middle. And what's next? Oh, this one's a little bit more complex. Align the trinket. Oh, you can kind of like hit it from different directions. All right. All right. So what do we have here? A couple chips right there. Looks like it's elongate. And I think the rest is probably disposable. If I destroy the support, it does. I was wondering how I get rid of that. So, like, that thing right there, my chisel isn't hard enough to destroy the black rock. I was wondering that if I destroyed the, the structure, basically, with, like, physics and architecture, if it would just fall off. It does. So that's how you eliminate it. So a little bit of, like, a puzzling feel to it, too. So we have ourselves a... Hey, okay, we'll continue. We got ourselves a hairpin. Kind of a fancy hairpin, too, if we're being honest. All right. You've used up all your time today. Every time you uncover a trinket, you use up a time slot tracked in the UI in the top left corner. You can buy and sell what you find, talk to NPCs, explore the workshop. Okay. Uh, let's put that down on the desk over there. There we go. Perfect. And then we'll take this over here. We'll drop it inside of our stash. And what does this do over here? We've got a customer. All right. Good day to you. I've heard tell you're the goblin to come to when in search of certain rare items. I mean, you've come to the right place. I'm in fact looking for a hairpin. I've had no luck for months now and I'm at my wit's end. I do hope your reputation is deserved. Uh, I'm after any hairpin. So apparently there's variants on these too, or at least it's intended that there will be variants. Alright, well there's your, there's your hairpin right there. Yeah, that's fine. Deal. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, look at the cute little portrait that swaps out. It's a fair price. I just really like this a lot. Thank you. First sale. So drag. Oh, we actually get like a, a pouch of coins too. That's kind of cool. There we go. So we get like a sack of money and then we just throw it in there. Nice, dude. Okay. I like the interactivity of it. Like I like the fact that like you, you actually have to pick up the sack of gold and like move it into your inventory. Like little actions like that. They add to the minutia of the game, which in a lot of games, if you're trying to go like action, 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 would kind of count as a detriment. But in the case of a game like this, where it's a little bit of like a power wash simulator or a little bit of like a viscera cleanup detail type game, the little minutia is actually what draws the player in and turns it into more of kind of like an immersive sim. And so I dig that. What else we got around here? So we can go talk to a shopkeeper. Hey, Goblin. What's up, boss man? I uh, told you before, I don't like it when you call me boss. This is a partnership. The boss of yours has a lovely old sponge if you're after one. Okay, sure, yeah. It'll be a hundred bucks if my math is right. How much? Gotta spend to earn. That's what they say. Let's go for it. Here you go. You'll make better use of it than me. A hundred bucks? Like a hundred pieces of gold for a sponge? That says a lot of things about the overall cleanliness of this universe that are highly concerning. Uh, don't forget, I'm taking the wagon on that trip for a couple of days, so take care of the shop while I'm away. All right, cool, man. Uh, so there's our sponge. We got ourselves an sponge. Uh, the sponge. You'll be able to clean trinkets up, and then you can sell them for even more gold. Goblins don't do crunch, so you've done everything that you can do for today. Navigate to your personal space and sleep. All right. To my personal space. Bro, that looks super uncomfortable. I live in a hole in the wall? Man... That's got to be terrible for your lumbar, dude. My S1 is screaming right now. All right, day two is here. What do we want to do? Let's go to the workbench. So how many things have been dropped off? Let's go ahead and take the sack right there. We'll take that. We'll break something new out. And it looks like we've got... It looks like those need to be, like, sliced down the middle. 
Oh, I thought from the shape we were going to need some... See how there's a line right there when you highlight it? I figured... Oh, it's ice. Okay, there was a line down the middle like on that one right there. So I figured maybe there'd be a different tool, like a little angle grinder or something. Where you go, nyah, 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 to get that one off right there. I definitely think there should be a lot of tools in this game. Like There should be like a big chunk of them uh, for like different tiles and nodes and things that need to be gotten rid of. Introduce almost like a little... I suppose deductive puzzle aspect to it almost. Okay. What do we have here? Hey, it's a big old war. I mean, it's either a drinking horn or a war horn. Is there a hole in the end? All right, so we'll take that right there. I'll, I'll figure it out. So we'll put that back over there. And I kind of wanted to look at the horn and see if it had a hole in it or not, but I guess not. All right, so we got the sponge, and if we got the sponge, oh, you actually scrubbed the dirt off of it. Okay, I thought it was going to be like an animation or something where like the sponge here effectively just like use the sponge on it, and then it magically becomes clean like all by its lonesome, you know, like all at once. I didn't realize I was going to have to actually get in there and scrub. All right, let's get in there and scrub. I just scrubbed my bathtub like a night ago. My shoulder's still tired from it, man. It's more tiring, like, scrubbing the sponge off, like, the curvature of a bathtub than you would figure, man. Like, your arm, like I work out quite a bit, and after about 10 minutes, my arm was exhausted, because you got to really get in there, man, with that sponge. You got to wipe that stuff out. Hey, the horn's all nice and done. All right, so we got it cleaned up. Let's go ahead and put the sponge back over there. I would recommend that no matter where you are with the sponge, if I right-click, it should automatically come out of my hand and just zoop. Go back over to its spot on the workbench. It's weird that you've got a mouse over over here to put it down without any kind of, like, spot or indicator. So, like, when I pick that up, it's got an indicator underneath it. When I pick this up, it doesn't. So it's difficult to see, like, the depth of how far in that you're holding it. And so, anyways, I, I would recommend just let the player drop it from wherever it is in their hand to, you know, drop it on the workbench. So there's our horn. What else we got in the bag today? What other goodies? Oof, this one's all scunged up. All right. Well, let's go around the outside. There we go. It's pretty satisfying when you get those little chain reactions like that, where it's like doop, 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 doop. It's got like a, a Peggle vibe to it almost. I don't know if you guys are Peggle fans, but I'm like a huge Peggle fan when it comes to good sound design in video games. Like, good sound design is absolutely one of those things that really gets screwed up a lot in gaming. And Peggle is like a master's class in sound design for making a game that's just got all those little clunks and dunks and things that sound good while you're playing it and give it like a very real tactile. What does that thing do? Oh, okay. Oh, there's like a... Oh, it's got like a... Okay. All right, it's got like a... There, there's a sweet spot. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it family friendly. <laughs> You discovered grandma's egg. Dude, I've seen Berserk. That's not, we don't want, uh, we don't want that in our inventory, bro. That right there is a concerning artifact. Yep, I've seen Berserk. I know where this goes. All right, let's scrub this thing off. Grandma, we'll clean your head a little bit right there. It feels like, you know, like when you're doing the dishes... And normally you can use like the entire flat of the sponge to clean like a flat surface area. But when you get to like a curve or like a nook or like a cranny, you've got to kind of like fold the sponge up on top of your index finger to really like dig in there and go get it with like your fingernail almost. It feels like that's what the sponge is doing right now. <laughs> like it feels like we've got that angularity to it that we're trying to scrape off. All right, so I've got most of Grandma's domer clean. Grandma's apparently been getting herself into trouble, getting all kinds of dirty out here, rolling in mud, as Grandma's do. There we go, all fixed up. Put the sponge back, put the sponge back down. There we go. Sponge has been put back down, and then we drop the Grandma egg in there. Oh, we've got more work to do today. Fair enough. All right, what do we have going on here? What you got for me? Uh, we got to find the sweet spot on those guys right there. Luckily, it was pretty easy to find. It looks like there's our main object, so we can get kind of aggressive about the cleaning on these other sides. All right. So if you can find the little geode nook 
on the edges of these. Okay, so that's all the... Oh, there it is. Cool. We got a magnifying glass. All right. Drop that on the table right there. Maybe clean this guy up a little bit. And after a bit, a little bit of love and elbow grease, she's all cleaned up. All right, drop her back over there. How are we looking as far as, like, time goes? So I'm actually, I guess there's different phases of the day while we're working on this. Yeah, it looks like it's almost sundown. All right, let's run one more. And then we'll talk to customers. Oh, we're out of time. We can't do that. All right, then. Uh, let's go see what customers we've got. That's totally not, that's, is that our boss in a mustache? Hit me with it. Well, I never, a new shop that I've never visited before. What fun. Hello, strange goblin who I've never met. Hello, customer that I've never met. Hmm, yes, well, now I'm looking for a grandma's egg. Is that something that you have, perchance? There's your grandma egg. A hundred bucks, huh? All right, deal. It's perfect. I'm sure I'll see you again soon. I guess it doesn't look like we have any more customers. I feel as though maybe our services as an antiquarian are not maybe in that high of demand. Oh, are there other tools? It looks like there's a paintbrush. There's a hammer. It looks like I have no idea what that is. Some kind of like a planer or something? I'm not exactly sure what that is. It looks like a coat hanger attached onto the end of a handle. And so I was thinking it was used to do some kind of plain scraping or something like that, but I've never seen that guy right there. And then over there, kind of hard to tell what that is from the shape and from the angle. It looks kind of like a wrist rocket slingshot to me, but like I don't know anything about anything. All right, let's go to bed. A new day is dawned. So let's go see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. We do have a customer over here. What a quaint looking shop. Yeah, I like it. I need a horn for drinking. Old one got a little too close to the furnace. All right. Sounds good. I got one of those for you. There we go. Man, that thing is bigger than it looked like when it was on the work desk. All right, deal. This is great. I'll make sure I visit again the next time I'm in town. Sounds like a plan to me. No more customers? All right. Let's do a goblin's work here. We got ourselves another challenge on this side. Okay, I think I see what I'm trying to do here. Yep. What I want to do is... Well, I was hoping I would not have to go all the way around the horn, but... We have to reveal the weak spot on those purple tiles. There it is. I was hoping I could just get the purple tiles to all, like, fall off like that right there once I got there, but it didn't happen like that. All right, so we've got... Oh, a bedpan. Beautiful. Just exactly what I wanted to find. Perfect. Yeah, this is a thing that I definitely want to be handling. Sure. All right, so bedpan. Let's go ahead and scrub it on. Let, let's scrub this one extra good. Honestly, I think you might want to break out the Ajax for this one. Like, maybe a little bit of Comet. I don't know. Like, I know Antiques Roadshow gets mad when you, like, touch up your relics. You know what I mean? But this one's got the poos on it. And so I, I just feel like that extra little bit of love and touch and squeeze and care will probably go a long way. Oh, God. Apparently it's clean. I I don't want it. Do we have any customers? No customers. All right. I like the parallax on that window right there. That's a nice little detail. What else we got? All kinds of things. Okay. Well, let's wheedle our way through that right there. Until we find the open facing that we're looking for. And in fact, it must be on the inside of this one. 
It looks like it is indeed. What a remarkably zen little game. Uh, that's pretty much the way that I would describe it. It's definitely going to need some more depth and it's going to need some more detail. Like a lot more tools and like little things you need to do. Uh, that it slowly unfolds on you until you're getting to things that are like... You know, the, the thing that I would look at for this game, actually, I think a really, really, really good game to look at for this, to blueprint after it'd be Hard Space Shipbreaker. If you break it down to core constituent parts, this is quite literally Hard Space Shipbreaker. Hard Space Shipbreaker is also a game that really has no time limits. You can take as long as you want. You can work as hard or as lazy as you want. You know, you can pull whatever shifts you want. But... It's got the narrative component every single morning when you get up occasionally your co-workers will come by and they sort of like speak in your ear while you're working on things and let you know what's happening in the world. Like it's got sort of like this emergent storyline that starts to unfold all around you while you're doing these mundane tasks like disassembling space thrusters. This game is pretty much the same thing. You're doing a mundane task in a shop, you know, cleaning up artifacts effectively. And these artifacts would be a really, really good gateway for characters you meet and things to start filling in the world and like chatting you up while you work on this just you know with voiceovers so that you don't have to like read subtitles or anything but hit you with like voice dialogue that's like happening while you're going through this and then you got to like sit down the sponge to like respond to them and stuff like that and like if you're trying to get something done a little bit more quickly you can get irritated with them or you know I'm trying to work here come on I'm working here this appears to be a very, very fancy helmet, is what it looks like to me. That or like a ceremonial headdress or something for like a festival or something? I don't know, it's kind of hard to say. A little bit right there. Oh, there it is. It's on the side of the horn. It's got a noose coming off its forehead. So what was that? Can I like click on it? I definitely think they should have some kind of like identification process too. So, like, when you take these objects, there could be, like, an identification table where you don't know exactly what it is. But then you take it over to the identification table, and you can rotate it around. And there's little spots after you get a magnifying lens, for example, that'll, like, glow when the lens is over it. And it, like, zooms in on it, and the character's like, huh. And then, like, it fills in a little glossary or, like, a little uh, encyclopedia that sort of also fills in the world. Dude, there's a lot of opportunities right here with what they're, like, playing around with. Oh boy, we got a big old chunky on this one. But, interestingly enough, we got to start with the purple first on this one. Usually the purple is like the last man out. So there's our object right there, but this one's quite a bit bigger. But yeah, I can see the appeal. I can definitely see what they're going for. Keep in mind that this is just a proof of concept demo uh, for their Kickstarter push. And so anyways, Hopefully there's many, many more layers of detail coming because that's what I would be looking for before I would personally play a game like this. Ooh, that was a good satisfying one right there. That was a really satisfying one. I also think there should be, like, so I know they're going for a cozy game, but I think there should be some kind of stakes to it, too. Like, you should be able to, like, damage the artifact if you're not, like, careful and you're not, like, paying attention to the clues that the various crust is giving you. Like, I know they're going for... I know they're going for, like, a cozy thing, but it's hard for me to invest in a game without some kind of stakes involved. Like, some reason for me to work carefully. You know what I mean? There we go. They've got the zen part locked in. Now it's just the other little mechanical things. we got a genie's lamp right here. Okay. Man, that's coming right off. All right, we'll take this over here. And we're almost there. You don't got to get it all, but you got to get the trouble spots. Otherwise, it doesn't count. You know, it's like washing dad's car when you were a kid. I used to routinely have to wash the car three and four times because it wasn't up to dad's standards. He'd come out and he'd be like, you didn't wash it properly. And then, you know, you got to hose it off again and then you got to wash the truck again. All right. There's our lamp. Perfect. I don't think we have any customers right now, but I think we're also out of time. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's nighttime right now, so let's go check and see if anybody slid through. Nobody came by, so that's fine. 
Uh, so that means I guess it's time to sleep. But this is Trash Goblin. I dig it. Like, this is a very, very simple, very early prototype of the game. But I think that if they could get this game to kind of cross over with the expository narrative elements that Hard Space Shipbreaker had, I think they have a winner on their hands. I do. I, I think this will sell. Like, and if Hard Space Shipbreaker isn't enough, another area I would look at, actually a weird area of inspiration I would look at for a title like this, is Toy Story 2. Uh, the scene where Woody is getting restored by the Epicurean guy that collects toys. For some reason, that scene right there really transfixes people. And I think the secret into getting your game to be really, really transfixing may be in that scene as well. There's also lots of little details in the background, like you can take the cork out of the bottles, for example, and move them around. You can turn the lights on and off. There's a bunch of little things. Add more interactivities like those, like when I click on the pot, it jingles and makes like a satisfying pottery noise. When I click on the coins, they kind of like stand up for a second and then roll and go wobble, 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 back down onto the table. Little things like that are a good sign, even in a little tech demo like this. So that's stuff all taken into account. I think this will definitely sell to somebody. I don't know if it's the kind of game that I would play. I, in general, do not enjoy cozy games, like, at all. Because I need some kind of, like, stakes, or I need some kind of, like, external force pushing down on me in order to motivate me to do a good job. Otherwise, I just get, like, lazy about it. So without, like, bills to pay, or without, like, the ability to totally, like, ruin a relic on accident with interconnected systems that you have to do in the right order, sort of like the pressure systems and the electrical systems uh, from something like Hard Space Shipbreaker, I don't know how hard I would stick to it. But this is definitely something that someone would play. This, this definitely has that feeling to it. I get the feeling it's got a market out there. And so, like, that would be my advice for me personally is, like, add more stakes to the game. But I know explicitly that's not what they want to do because of the press uh, kit they sent on over. Said that this is meant to definitely be, like, a at-your-own-pace-you-can't-fail kind of game where you just kind of pass time and fix up little relics and things. And that's okay. Uh, this game is called Trash Goblin. It's on Kickstarter right now. You can go check it out. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to today up on the chopping block. We were uh, dissecting some of these little relics out here in Trash Goblin. Tomorrow we'll be doing something else. Thank you for spending time with me, and that's about all I got. Bye, folks.